Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about build a technical documentation page of FreeCodeCamp, the course of web responsive apart. So basically in this project we're going to build this page that you're seeing right now where we have this navbar here with JS documentation and in the right part we have the documentation of JavaScript. One thing that is important that we're going to add is for example if I click here hello world our page will redirect us to the session of hello world okay and this is pretty much what we're going to do we have to split our screen into these two parts and then we work with the navbar and we work with the sessions in here as well. This is what we have so far, this empty page, and this is where we're gonna follow the user stories, because basically the user stories is gonna give us the instructions we need to pass the tests of this frequent camp project, okay? We have two files only, so we're gonna work with HTML and CSS in this part, and we'll be able to finish this project. So let's start. Basically here, every time we're creating an HTML file, we need the HTML, sorry, the doc type HTML to tell the user that we're working, to tell the browser that we're working with an HTML file. And we need to open up an HTML uh, tag where we're gonna use the word English to tell that our the language of our file is English. Then in HTML, we have two main tags, that is the head, and head is everything that is not visual, and the body, that's everything that is visual, okay? Basically in the head, we're gonna link we can give the title of our page here that I'm gonna call technical documentation. And this will, this will be the name of the tab of our project. And I will also create a link with our CSS file. So here we need to have link, a uh, realm style sheet. So we're saying that this relationship is a style sheet. And the file we use href equals to styles.css. If this is too much for you and you don't remember why we're doing this, please watch the previous videos and do the previous projects because it will be really important for solving for solving this one. Okay? Then we have our body, and in our body they are telling us that we're gonna have an element main. Actually, I'm gonna start with nav. If you see in here in the item 8 and we're going to give an id of nav bar so this nav tag will be in the left and in the right we're going to have our main and here in the item 1 they're telling us to give id equals to main doc so we're splitting our screen into two okay i'm going to work a little bit with the css to show you what is going on so initially i'm going to use here a hash for id and i'm going to call nav bar and for this nav bar i'm going to give a background color of red just because i want to show you what is going on and for the main doc i'm going to give a background color of blue so let's see what is going on so if i refresh this page in here this is the page of our project we're not able to see anything so what i'm going to do i'm going to give a height of 100 vh to say that i want to use the whole uh the whole height of the page and i'm going to give a width of 20 percent and in here, I'm gonna say a width of 80%. So let's see what is going on. If I save in here and I refresh, now we'll be able to see. Let me give a height as well. I'm gonna give a height of 100 VH. So basically we're able to see in here the red part and if we scroll down, we have the blue part. But we don't wanna put everything one uh, above the other. We wanna put them in the same row. So to do this, we're gonna work with the body tag Okay, the body is the body of our, our HTML. This is a tag that we have in here. And we're gonna use to create this space. So I wanna put everything in the same row. I'm gonna say display flex. The flex direction will be row. So if we take a look right now, they are in the same row like we were expecting, okay? And like you can see here, we have our nav bar. Probably we have to make it a little bit bigger. So I would change here to 30 and here to 70. And now I think it will look a little bit more similar, probably 25, 30 is too much. And this way we can split them into two pieces, our screen. I'm gonna let here in red, and right now we're gonna work with the blue part because we're gonna start working with the documentation, okay? So let me open up in here so we can work with it. I'm gonna remove the background color right now, and this is pretty much what we need. Now let's work with the main. So basically with the main doc element, you can see several sessions element, each with a class of main session. So basically here is one main session, introduction, we have another one, what you should already know. We have another one, JavaScript and Java. So we're gonna create our first session inside of our main. So here I'm gonna say session and they have the class main session. 
let me close in here and then we need a closing session part. In here, they're telling us that the first element with, uh, within each main session should be a header element, which contains the text that describe the topic of the documentation. So basically here, we're gonna call the first as main. So in here, we're gonna create a header tag where we're gonna say introduction, header. Okay, and we can see this in here, we're seeing the word introduction. The next step, and this is something we're gonna do multiple times. Each session we're creating, we're gonna give the ID of the header that we did. So for example here, ID equals to introduction. And this will help us that once we click in the navbar, we will be able to be redirected to this session. All right, then now we can start adding the message. So this is our first step. Okay, I'm gonna add this message in our session. So after the header here, I'm gonna add a paragraph where I'm gonna insert this message. Let me shrink this part. So, so far we have this paragraph, like we can see here. We can see that once we have over them, we need to give a space. So I'm gonna split into two paragraphs. This will be one paragraph, and this will be a new one. And right now we can see them split it. Then we're gonna have two list items. So we're gonna use an unordered list because we can see here that this is a bullet point. So basically in here, let's see, we're gonna use a unordered list. Let me fix the indentation for this part. Here we're gonna have a unordered list. And inside this unordered list, we're gonna have the two list items that we're able to see in there. So here I'm creating a list item tag that it's LI. We have ordered list as well. And if we were using ordered list, we're gonna have numbers instead of bullet points. So this is the message for the first list item. And we're gonna add here in the middle of the first list item. And here, this is the second list item. So just so you can see, this is how it looked like so far. And I'm gonna add the second message. It will be added in here and we're able to see here in this part, okay? Now we're gonna continue completing the other parts. So now we're gonna have this what you should already know. So I'm gonna create a new session. So here I'm gonna create a new session. And they're telling us to give the class equals to main session. And we need to give an ID of the name we're gonna use. So here they're telling us to use underscore, oops. So quotation mark and during these spaces where we have these spaces i'm gonna use a underscore okay then we're gonna close the session pay the session tag and inside of the session i'm gonna have a header with this message that we just copy and here i'm gonna paste what you should already know so this is our second session in the end right now i'm not gonna fill in the other parts i'm gonna create all the main and all the sessions so the next one will be javascript and we can do this a couple of times so i'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna paste in there. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. By the end, we're gonna have more twelve sessions, right? So I'm gonna add twelve. And right now, I'm gonna start changing the name. So if you want, I won't be saying anything. And right now, I'm just gonna start changing here the name, the ID, and the session, and the header. Sorry. So like you can see, I added all the sessions with ID and the header, all right? This is extremely important. And if you see here, this is exactly what we have. We have the header and we have the session. We, I didn't add the content of the session, but we already have the, the idea in here. Now I'm gonna do some changes in the CSS because I want this to look a little bit more similar to what is going on. So basically, if I open up here the style, if I open up here the styles.css, I'm gonna change the font family to the same one that they are using. If you don't know, you can see the, the inspect of the of this page here, the technical documentation. Okay, so it's open sans. All right, and if we take a look in here, it already changed a bit, I don't think so. I'm gonna change as well the color, and I want this to be hash 44, sorry, hash 4D, 4E53, I'm taking a look here at my notes. So now it's not, so it's not, now not that, Actually, I don't need this quotation mark. That's why it wasn't founding. So now it's not that dark as it was. I'm gonna add here a line height as well of 1.5. And now we're gonna have some spacing be uh, between the lines, okay? And I'm gonna be sure that the background color will be white. Okay, so I, I am make, being sure that this will be white, okay? Now we're gonna start styling the navbar because this will be the, the worst part. Later, we just need to add the content basically. So here in the navbar, we're gonna have, uh, the navbar should contain a link 
A element with the class never link. There should be one for each element we have here in the, our main. So basically, if you take a look, each session we have in here, we have this session in this part. So we're going to have this as well. But before, we need to have a header in our nav bar. So I'm going to start here in our nav bar. And basically, what we're going to do, we're going to have a header where we're going to contain the title of our nav bar. That is JS documentation. So here, JS documentation header. Then what are we going to do? We're going to have an unordered list to create this list, uh, this list in here that we're seeing. OK, so here UL. And I will remove the, the decorator for this UL. So I'm going to give here an ID of UL navbar. OK, and let's see. So far we have this in red. Let me remove this red from here. OK, great. So now we have this and now we're going to have this uh, this link. The every list item will have will be a link for one session in our HTML. So basically here we're going to create our LI. And one thing that is important, if you take a look in here, uh, the, the header element in the navbar must contain that comes must come before any a link. So that's why we're adding before the unordered list each element with the class nav link. So here I'm going to give a class. Actually, not in here. I'm going to create soon. We're going to have a class nav link and this nav link should contain text that corresponds to the header text in each session. So like I said, if we click in hello world, we have to go to the hello world session. So to do this, we're going to use the a tag because the a tag redirects us somewhere. And I'm going to give a class here of nav link. They're expecting us to do this. I'm going to use here href. OK, how can we redirect to a page of our uh, part of our page? We're going to use the ID that we give here in the session. So, for example, if we want to go to introduction, we're going to say hash introduction and we will be directed redirected to this introduction part. OK, and then we need the closing tag. The message we're going to display here in the middle will be the name of the session we want to go. So this is exactly what we have in here. We click in introduction. We're going to introduction. Now we're going to do this for the other ones. So again, we're going to copy this LI multiple times until we add all of them again. So I'm going to do one more time with you and then I will be doing by myself. But you can check here uh, faster. So for example, here the ID is what you have. You should already know. So we're going to copy this ID and we're going to use here in our href hash the ID that we want to go. And here the message will be what you should already no. And if we take a look in here, now we have this message and when we click, we're being redirected to this part. OK, so I'll be doing this right now and then we worry about the content and the style. Like you can see here, we finish adding all the messages and if we click, we go to the part. OK, now let's remove this style because it's a little bit confusing, right? So in here, we're going to add the class nav link and I'm going to use the I'm going to change the a tag. And here we're going to say text decoration none. And this will remove the hyperlink of our page or at least it should. Let's see if we use nav link only, it changes. So if we click nav link, it changes in here. And now if we want to remove the bullet point, we need to use list style type equals to none. And if we go back in here, it should remove this. Let's see. Actually, the a link is not the list item. So we're going to use here the li. And for this li, I'm going to say actually hash. And if we take a look here in the index, our li are inside of our ul navbar ID. So in here, I'm going to use ul navbar and I'm going to use this list style type none. And now we remove this list style type none. The color in here, I want to change the color for the same as we have. So I'm going to copy here and I'm going to hard code in the nav link to let all this the same color. OK, and now even if we click, it's not changing the color like we were expecting in here. So we will continue working with this style. OK, not right now. So right now, let's add the content that it's missing. So basically, the part of the nav bar is done. OK, the part of the sessions, it's almost done. Now we need to worry about adding the paragraphs and the code tags that they ask us to do. So here they are telling us that should contain at least 10 paragraphs, uh, five code elements, uh, five li. So basically, just to make our life easier, I'm going to copy the same things that we have in here. So right now I'm going to use, for example, this is a paragraph. So in here I'm going to add in the part of the session. So let's go to the session. What do we already know? So here P, I'm going to add this paragraph. Great, we can see this in here. And now I'm going to add these three list items. So I'm going to create here an order list. And now I'm going to create the three list items. So here, li, here it will be another li, and here it will be another li. And I'm going to close now the li. So 
So like we can see here, right now we have the same things that we have in the what you should already know. Now for the JavaScript, we have three paragraphs. So I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna add these three paragraphs in our JavaScript and Java. So in here, inside of our session, JavaScript and Java, I'm gonna have three paragraphs, like I mentioned. And I'm gonna insert the paragraph inside of each part. So I have here another paragraph. And one more paragraph in here. Great. Okay. Now in our next session, hello world. Basically, if you take a look in here, we have a paragraph as well, but we have this code and then we have another paragraph. So I'm gonna use here the paragraph. And I'm gonna add the other paragraph in the end as well. And then we're gonna work with the code tag. Basically the code tag will create this different uh, font size here that we're seeing. And we can also manipulate the background color to be exactly the same. So basically here we're gonna use code and it will create this structure for us. So let's see if I copy these two lines and I paste in here, we're gonna see code blah, 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 alert, blah, blah, blah. And this is pretty much what